It's well known that blackjack is one of the only casino table games that can be legitimately beaten. Do you know that blackjack is the only game where a smart player has a mathematical advantage over the hunt? And the way you beat blackjack is by counting cards. But of the 20 plus different counting systems, which one do you choose? I'll show you how to pick the best blackjack card counting system today on Jack Ace. <laughs> What up donkeys, Jack Hayes here with jackhayes.com and today I'm going to sift through over 20 different card counting systems to help you pick the one that's right for you. If you're not familiar with blackjack card counting, here's a really quick explanation. The game of blackjack has an extremely small advantage for the casino. If a player memorizes blackjack basic strategy, the house will only win around half of 1% of the money wagered. So for every $100 you bet, the house will only make 50 cents from you on average. That's less than half of the house's advantage compared to the next best game, Baccarat. And that's smaller than one-tenth of the astronomical house edge in double zero roulette. So even if you don't know how to count cards, Blackjack offers one of the smallest house edges in the casino. But Blackjack is somewhat of a unique game because not only do they not shuffle after every hand, but the advantage to the game kind of bounces back and forth between the player and the house as certain cards are removed. And that's because when you remove certain cards, it can help the player a lot. And when you remove other cards, it can help the dealer a lot. Why don't you give me half the money you were gonna bet? Then we'll go out back, I'll kick you in the nuts, and we'll call it a day. When the undealt stack of cards is rich in tens and aces, that helps the player. And when the undealt stack of cards is rich in low cards, that helps the dealer. Tens and aces help the player because there's a massive imbalance in payment when the players dealt both a 10 and an ace. In a traditional blackjack game, when the players dealt a 21, they will get one and a half times their bet. If the dealer gets the same two cards, he'll only win the player's original bet. So if you know that four cards remain and three of them are tens and one of them is an ace, you have a 50% edge over the house. With a $100 bet, the player will win $150 two out of four times. He'll take insurance for an overall push one out of four times. And he'll only lose his original $100 one out of four times. That means for every $100 he bets in this situation, he'll end up $50 ahead on average. And as we saw earlier, when the dealer has an ace showing, the player has the option of taking insurance, which can essentially turn a losing hand into a push when the dealer has a 10 in the hole. And a card counter is very likely to do this when he's sure that there are many 10s remaining to be dealt. And the player will also have more opportunities to double down and split and stand with stiff hands when he's sure that the next card will bust him. And on the flip side, a high percentage of low cards will benefit the dealer. This is because the dealer is a lot less likely to bust by going over 21 when there are mostly low cards left. So contrary to what many people think, card counting doesn't have to involve memorizing every single card that has been dealt. You took my queen, Ray. I've got a 10. I needed that queen. I can't take Sir. your queen, Ray. There's lots of them. There's lots of them? Lots and lots of them. Hold on here. Hold on here for a second. Double down. Queen. Queen. Yes. Most card counting systems are concerned with keeping track of the balance of remaining high cards to low cards. Every card counting system has a few key characteristics. The card's values, whether it's balanced versus unbalanced, the basic strategy deviations, and whether it includes side counts. Typically, the more complex the system, the higher the potential win rate. For almost all card counting systems, you maintain a running total based on the cards that have been seen. Low cards like two through six typically have a positive value assigned to them. High cards like tens and aces are negative. So the higher the count, the higher the potential advantage to the player because it means that a lot of low cards have been dealt and that a high imbalance of high cards remain to be dealt. Simple systems will assign plus one and minus one only. More complicated systems may have fractional values or values that can range from minus four to plus four. And your success as a card counter will depend on how quickly you can add and subtract these values as the cards are dealt. But having a running count of plus six isn't enough to determine whether you have a large advantage or not. Having a running count of plus six with one deck remaining to be dealt is a lot different than having a running count of plus six with eight decks remaining. So there has to be a way to normalize the running count into something more meaningful. In the vast majority of systems, the count is balanced. This means that if you count through a complete 52 card deck, you'll start and end with a count of zero. So to convert your running count into what's called the true count, you have to divide your running total by the number of decks remaining to be dealt. 
So with a balanced system, having a running count of plus six with six decks remaining is about equivalent to having a running count of one with one deck remaining. But in more recent years, unbalanced systems have become more popular. These are typically systems that have a positive value when you count through a complete 52 card deck. So these systems compensate for this imbalance by starting the count with a negative number when there's more than one deck. This number is usually a static value multiplied by the number of decks in the shoe. And the great thing about unbalanced systems is that you never have to divide. For these systems, you don't need to calculate a true count. You just wait until your running count passes a certain threshold and you will know to bet high and deviate from basic strategy for certain decisions. And that brings us to deviations. Contrary to what many people believe, the majority of your advantage while card counting isn't made from making goofy plays like hitting a hard 17. Hit me. You have 17, sir. I like to live dangerously. Most of your advantage is made by betting high when the count is high. But even so, you can always increase your win rate by learning a handful of situations when it's valuable to deviate from basic strategy. Depending on the complexity of the system you choose and how deep into learning deviations you want to go, you can stretch your win rate to the max by learning beyond the illustrious 18 deviations and fab four surrender situations for your counting system. And some really complex systems include deviations for side counts. This means tracking specific cards in addition to bundling high cards and low cards into their respective groups. And probably the most common side count is the ace side count. This is because the ace is mostly neutral when it comes to making deviations to basic strategy. When you bundle aces with tens, it actually nerfs your ability to make accurate play deviations. Most of the benefit you get by bundling aces with tens has to do with bet sizing. For example, if the deck is extremely rich in aces, most deviations to stand on a 16 versus a dealer 10 will be clouded and you will often make a statistically incorrect decision. And if the deck is extremely rich in aces, it can really water down the accuracy of your insurance deviation as well. So using side counts is an extremely advanced tactic for truly stretching out your win rate. But it's really not for the faint of heart. Make sure you're able to count other systems perfectly before attempting to learn a count that relies on side counts. So by far the most popular card counting system is the high-low system. It's a counting system demonstrated in the film 21. Eight, the count is still plus 16. 10, it's minus one, it counts plus 15. Eight, still plus 15. Nine, plus 15. Five, uh, the count's 16. And it's usually the go-to system that people talk about when discussing card counting. It's a balanced, single-level system with no side counts. Twos through sixes are valued at plus one when they're dealt, and tens and aces are valued at minus one when they're dealt. And since this is a balanced count, you have to perform true count conversion by dividing by the number of undealt decks. This is the system I learned in the early 90s, and it's tried and true. And best of all, if you want to install a card counting app on your mobile phone, it's most likely going to use this system. And the best resource for learning the high-low system is probably the book Professional Blackjack by Stanford Wong. The next system I would recommend is the KO system. The KO system is short for the knockout system, and it's also the initials of the original authors, Ken Fuchs and Olaf Vancura. By far, this is the simplest system to use. And if you want to take the simplicity of KO to the next level, you can learn Rico, or the ridiculously easy version of the KO system. Rico is just a slightly watered down version of KO and only loses about 1% of effectiveness compared to KO. On QFit.com, they rate these two systems as 7.5 and 8 in terms of simplicity, which are the two highest ratings in that category. This is an unbalanced single level system with no side counts. The KO system values twos through sevens as plus one, and like high-low, tens and aces are minus one. Running through a 52 card deck will result in a count of plus four. So for this system, you start with a running count of four minus four times the number of decks being used. So for a double deck game, you start with a running count of four minus four times two, which is minus four. And for a six deck shoe, start with a running count of four minus four times six, which is minus 20. Even though there are more resources for learning high-low, I would suggest learning KO or RICO first. It doesn't take long to learn this system, and it's a great indicator of whether you'll be able to handle a more complicated system. The best way to start learning about KO and RICO is through the book Knockout Blackjack by Fuchs and Vancura. KO and RICO are my recommendations for blackjack players who have already mastered basic strategy. And I really want to emphasize that you need to 100% memorize basic strategy before attempting to learn any blackjack card counting system. 
If you can master KO, you can move on to high-low, which should really improve your win rate. And if you can master high-low, and I mean master, you can move on to something next level. And when I say master, I mean you can carry on full-on conversations with other people while keeping the count, adjusting your bets, and making deviations with ease. So for those of you ready for the next level, you can move on to a non-ace reckon system where you maintain a side count of aces. For this, the high opt one and high opt two systems will work. The high opt one is a balanced one level system with a side count of aces, and the high opt two is a balanced two level system with a side count of aces. You can read more about the high opt systems in the world's greatest blackjack book by Lance Humble and Carl Cooper. But again, these systems are only gonna have a small effect on your overall win rate, which can be easily erased by just a few mistakes. So it's often not worth it unless you're a thousand percent sure you're not making any mistakes in high low. So my number one recommendation for most beginners is the KO system. And if you can master that, or if you're pretty confident in your abilities, you can jump straight to high-low. And if you want something next level, you can learn one of the high-opt systems. But trying to master any of these is worthless if you haven't memorized basic strategy. You can go to my site, jackace.com, to access free resources that can help teach you basic strategy, including audio flashcards on SoundCloud, video flashcards here on YouTube, and even an Alexa skill on the Amazon Echo. Alexa, open Jack Ace flashcards. Welcome to Jack Ace's Blackjack Basic Strategy flashcards. And you can even watch my video on how to learn blackjack in your sleep. If you enjoyed this, remember to like and subscribe. Always gamble responsibly. Never play 6 to 5 blackjack. And peace out, donkeys.